you know, when I went to prison, mobile, mobile phones didn't exist. I came out and I'm handed a mobile phone for the first time. Oh, oh wow, yeah. Do. What was that like? <coughs> Were you just there like, crazy. Do you, what do you, the f*** have uh, I spawned uh, into here? I, I walked down the court of appeal steps. I waved my fist and did what we did. You know, I was innocent. I've been in prison all these years and I get in the back of a taxi with my sister. And now you've got to remember, in prison... I didn't move any faster than my feet could take me, right? So we're talking running around the exercise yard, you know, 10, 15 miles yeah. an hour if top speed. I don't know I <laughs> top, yeah. All of a sudden, I'm in the back of a taxi. The taxi's going at 25 miles an hour, and I'm kind of disorientated because I'm just not used to moving that far. I'm not used to seeing, you know, in the distance because brick walls in prison restrict your vision. You can mm. only see the blue sky, which is our hope. So when you're out and you've got this open space, it can be very disorientating. So I'm in the back of this taxi and my sister hands me a mobile phone. You know, when I was in prison, mobile phones were too big to get smuggled in. Now they've got them like that. They put them up their ass and they take them in. But when I was in prison, they were big bricks like that. She hands me the mobile phone in the back of the taxi. I didn't know what to do with it. I really did. I knew how to use a phone because they had handheld phones in prison and you dip, 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 dip. These mobile phones, I really didn't know what to do with it. It might sound stupid, but that was the reality. And they giggled at me and laughed at me and told me what to do with the mobile phone. And that's indicative of all the things that I then rediscovered yeah. in those 12 years. You know, technology had moved on, emails, the internet, Google and all that. So when I first joined the radio station, the, the Today program, which is the most prestigious radio program in the country, um, you know, movers and shakers, the prime minister down, come onto that platform. I was given a mini disc and a microphone to go and record interviews with people. And I didn't know how to use this equipment. I bluffed it and pretended that I did yeah. and then did all the kind of stuff. That's that kind of like our producer, to be yeah. fair. <laughs> <laughs> I just wigged it and just did it as I went along and discovered. I made some serious mistakes. And one of the biggest mistakes, I went to interview a copper called Nipper Reed. Nipper Reed was responsible for the arrest of the Cray twins. You know, that's right. where he got his reputation yeah. from. And I met Reggie Cray in prison. And one of the first stories that editor of that program wanted me to do was to find out if Ronnie's bro Reggie's brother, Ronnie Cray, had actually killed Reggie's wife. Um, which was one of the stories. Um, so I went in search of, of this copper who arrested Reggie, and I did an interview with him on this mini disc, this kind of little device that records things, and did the interview. And then I tried to edit it on my way back to the studio and deleted the whole fucking lot. That's <laughs> oh, how wow. naive I was. But it was a lesson learned. You know, yeah. technology yeah. from that moment on has become my kind of bugbear, and I'm really good with it. So lessons learned. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. That's, was it a good interview? Were you kind of gutted <laughs> as well? He was lucky because I called him up on the phone and he did the interview over the phone. So oh, God. Away with it. Just say what you said earlier, yeah. mate. Yeah. 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 Sorry, mate. I've just deleted the whole but, thing. But you know what? It was a lesson for yeah. me, and it's a lesson for anybody. Yeah. You, you, you know, don't don't pretend you know something that you don't know. Learn it, you know, yeah. discover it. And that's been my philosophy ever since. Are the yeah. craze still alive? Sorry? Are the craze still alive? No, both the craze are dead. Yeah. Reggie died a few years ago, actually. He was still in prison. He was never yeah. released. He died in a hospital outside of prison. I, I was wow. at his funeral and, and stuff like that. He was, the, you know, whatever your view is of the Cray twins, R Reggie, I, you know, I was banged up with him for three or four years. We got to know each other really well. You know, he, he used to come in my cell... And um, he, he, you know, he was gay, just like his brother Ronnie, but he hid that reality. And he, he had a relationship with a guy called Bradley, who was another prisoner. And um, that was the story I was after. So I was going to interview Bradley to find out whether Reggie had ever confessed to Bradley about, because they were really in love. Bradley was yeah. only in his 20s and Reggie was in his 60s, but they had this relationship going on. Um, but Reggie, in his last book... He wrote in his book that I was the only... Now, he'd been in prison 30-odd years. And in his last book, he wrote in his last book that I was one of the only men that he'd ever met in prison that he believed was innocent. So going back to your question about whether people do or don't believe in it, when you have someone like Reggie Cray, who's been in prison 30 years and heard it all, seen it all from everybody, to <laughs> write a testimony like that, that because of the way I conducted myself, as I said, he wrote in his book that I was one of the only people he'd ever met in prison that he truly believed was innocent. That's, he was wrong. Wow. Yeah, that's wow. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty, like I said, if you're going to get it from anyone, I think getting it from him is probably a well, pretty Well, not everybody thing. would agree with no, that given yeah. his reputation. Yeah. Right, that's fair. It means something to yeah. prisoners who have done a long, long time. Yeah.